Right. Hello, uh, welcome back to my RTS tutorial in Unity. Today, we're just doing resources, basically. It'll just be a quick one because it's quite simple, but it's sort of like laying the foundation for the next couple of episodes because it's going to be uh, like setting workers to build unit, to build buildings, sorry, and then buildings to build other units. So we can have this cycle of gameplay and yeah, the gameplay starts to come out sort of, but yeah, I'll just show you basically. Now, so if we click on Mr. Worker here, and you'll see first off that I'm in a uh, build mode, so I should probably switch out of that. Actually, no, because I need to build a storehouse first. So I'll click there, build a storehouse. And since I know it's a bit inelegant to have to switch in the inspector, but that'll be coming next part to switch between creating buildings and units, selecting units, but whatever. So yeah, so now you'll see we've got uh, five little tabs at the top of the screen. Food, wood, stone, iron, and gold. They might be a bit hard to read. I can, actually, can I zoom in on these? Yeah, I can zoom in on a... No, I can't. Oh, well. You get the idea. You can see it there. So if I click on the worker there, and right click on stone, I'll right click on this one, time to go work some wheat, and tell you to work gold. Always believe in your soul. And you'll see he goes to the warehouse. And you'll see that stone has increased by 100. Or oh, I'll show you in the inspector, actually. Uh, game controller resource. Yeah, you'll see that food and stone have increased when the uh, workers get to the warehouse. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Yeah. Let's go see how we did this. OK, so basically, it's simple. Uh, Got a static reference again, which we have in most scripts, and basically integers to store the resource values. Uh, we set the static reference here, uh, and we got two methods to uh, call reduce resources and increase re resources, which basically calls the same alter resource value method, but this one will multiply the amount by minus one, just so it's a negative number, so it's reducing the amount of resources. But we also have a slightly more complex, it's not that complex, it's just a switch statement, but yeah. We have a boolean to check that we have enough of a particular resource. So basically what we do is we pass in the string of the resource name of the resource that we want to check and the amount. So say if we were constructing a building and it cost 500 stone, we pass in stone and 500. And if stone was more than that amount, it would turn true. So we'd be able to produce stone by that amount in the next line, and then uh, be a hunky-dory. But if we didn't have enough, we'd return false. So we'll have to call this method check separately when we're constructing something for each resource that it needs, whatever you're building. And then if all of them return true, then it'll be okay to build it. Otherwise, we don't, if that makes sense. I think I've butchered that explanation, but whatever. And again, we have a similar uh, sort of thing for altering the resource value, except we don't check if we have more. We just uh, add the amount to the particular resource. So again, we check for food, wood, stone, iron, and we just add the amount. Uh, and again, if we look back to this bit, even if for reducing resources, we just add a negative number, which is basic maths. So yeah. I don't think I need to explain that that much. Uh, again, we've got some scaling stuff. We've also got a uh, display width, which is basically just going to be the width of the uh, little boxes that display the amount of resources you have. Uh, and we do all the usual scaling stuff, and we have a for loop to draw them. This is basically for controlling the uh, scale. So you'll see in each posi the position for each uh, resource. Uh, display box, uh, it adds display width times x, so display width is just 1920 divided by 6, and yeah, so that'll basi that just basically gives us the effect of a load of bars at the top of the screen that have the resource in them, and you can stylize, st do some styling or something to make it look better, but for now that'll do. Uh, again. We have to have a switch statement 
for X to basically, I just found this was the best way of doing it to get the, uh, based on the number it gives, we display a different resource box. Well, it's the same size, we just add the different uh, resource value. So wood, food, food dot two string, wood, wood dot two string, stone, etc. And we break, uh, what was one more thing? Oh, I know there are only five resources, but this divides by six. Uh, Basically, I was just leaving space for, say, you could have a button up there that leads to the pause menu or something like that, you know. Just thinking ahead a little bit. Uh, and there's two other things I changed. On the uh, unit order script, I don't have that open. Uh, I have added a line of code on the resource thing. So basically, when we've uh, got a worker selected and we've right-clicked the resource, and we can uh, do that particular action, so if we had workers selected, what we do is we get, once the uh, action has uh, gathered resources, once the action to gather resources has been added to the uh, unit, in, in the, the unit that we're uh, looking at, uh, we have to, and, and, uh, and we can actually perform the action, sorry, uh, we have to grab it again, because if we just use action, since that's the parent class, and the uh, string I've added for resource type, which is basically just to store what resource we're gathering in that particular action, uh, since that is not part of the parent action, it's just part of action gather resources, because not, not every action gathers resources. Uh, yeah, we need to get it again as the specific action gather resource type, or class, or whatever. And then we just set the uh, resource type to uh, the get component resource. So uh, just a quick flashback, we have a class for resource and that's just basically a string my type. Uh, if you were really want to go into more advanced stuff on this, you could have like, uh, what was I thinking of? Uh, like Age of Empires where it has a, a finite amount in each like little stone or tree or whatever, but I'm not doing that. And then the child classes basically just have a different value set in the inspector. If I look at the prefabs, see stone, gold, iron, wood, etc. Food. Uh, the wheat one has one as well, but there's not one in the unplayed scene. That just gets generated with the tiles. And yeah, I think these are the two lines that I added here. So yeah. Uh, so that is basically, so that once we get to the uh, storehouse, we basically just increase the resources by the resource type and by 100. Uh, you could have like, I don't know, you could have some separate value that's not hard coded to, uh, if you like wanted to have upgrades say that increase the uh, gathering resource capacity or, you know, whatever. This is just basic intro. It's not hard to do stuff like that. So I'll leave that to you. But for now, we're just doing the basic stuff. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, if you are copying along, I doubt it, but because I'm bad at explaining stuff, but whatever, uh, the idea works. Uh, basically, I've changed all the uh, types to be lowercase to match the uh, resource manager's identifier for the resources thing. So, yeah. And that's just about it. So, I'll give you a quick demo again. Uh, so, again, if we click on worker, or if we don't, we actually click on a storehouse, build that. And we switch over to selecting units. We can now click on a worker, click on a resource, and gather them. So you'll see he'll go to the stone, he goes to the gold, and all those values increase, as you might be able to read in the uh, bars at the top. You might not be able to because it's kind of hard to read, but whatever. So yeah, that's it. Uh, cheers for watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, go check out my stuff on Itch.io, which is basically loud or quiet. Uh, Omega Station, which is due for a new update, which may be next week, because I've been fixing some bugs, making the level generation a bit better. You know, stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Bye.